Static typing is a feature that's come with Godot since Godot 3.1. It's a way for you to explicitly define types within GDScript and get some of the benefits of using a statically typed language, even though GDScript is a dynamically typed language. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use it in Godot, what some of the benefits are and some of the drawbacks, and then give you some further resources where you can continue to learn about static typing in your own game projects. First, let's talk briefly about what it means that GDScript is a dynamically typed language. Fundamentally, it means that when you don't specify a type in GDScript, it can accept anything as a parameter of any type. If you have a function that takes a parameter, that parameter can come in as an array, as a integer, as a string, as null, as whatever it may be. And so to illustrate that, I have a sample project set up here with a white box that's the player and then a red box that is a collision zone. And so I've set it up so that when the player enters the collision zone, uh, the collision zone will call a method on the player that, and give it a dynamic parameter. So here you'll see in our detection zone here, when the player enters it, it will pass in a dynamic parameter of three, which is an integer. But when our player exits the body, it will pass in an array of strings. So two totally different things, right? An integer and an array of strings. And yet they're both calling the same take dynamic parameter on our player. And if I go to our player script, you'll see here, there's no typing involved here. It's just a, a parameter. There's no type given with it. It's whatever type it gets. So it'll print out whatever it, get, it gets regardless of that type. So if I run our sample project here, you will see that when the player enters our red square, we get body entered and three printed out. So remember, we're passing in an integer value of three. But when the player leaves this square, we'll see an array of strings that get printed out. So this same function, like we said, can take any type of parameter. It doesn't matter what the type is, it'll handle it and print it out. So this is a powerful thing about dynamically typed languages like GDScript, is it gives you a lot of flexibility to pass things around of multiple types. However, this isn't always a desirable thing. And in fact, sometimes it can lead to confusion, it can make it harder to read code, or you can be getting values you don't expect because your functions are set up to take whatever type of parameter they end up getting. And sometimes you might be passing in a type that you're not wanting to. And in order to alleviate this and to help add a little bit more structure to code, especially in a language like GDScript, which does not always have the best tooling around it and the best auto completion and refactoring capabilities to help you write really well organized, consistently typed code, we can use static typing to help alleviate some of these concerns. So let's go back into these scripts and look at what we can do with static typing to help make this a bit better. So there's three primary ways to add static typing to your code that'll help make your game a little bit easier to work with. The first one we're gonna look at is parameter typing. And this is something that we were kind of just seeing an issue with with the code we are running. So here our parameter can take anything, but let's say we really only wanted it to take an integer. We didn't want floats or strings or arrays or objects to get passed in. We only wanted it to work if we got an integer in. So what I can do is add, use a colon here like this and then specify the type. Um, and what this means is that if this function gets a, it gets passed in anything that isn't an integer, it'll cause an error while the game's running. And it'll also give you an error in your editor if you're trying to type code or pass in something else to that function while you're writing. So we can see that now if I run this game, we'll see that as soon as we come in here, it'll work when we come in because we're passing an integer when we enter the square, right? But when I leave, we'll see an error. So right here, we are saying invalid type, we're trying to pass in an array when we expect an integer. And so this is one way that um, it, using static typing is really good because we're, we're enforcing standards about what types of parameters we can get in. But there's a problem here though, right? Uh, in our detection zone, we don't actually know that our body is of type player. And so we're just assuming that there's a function called this, but we don't actually have access within the editor to what the type parameters we've specified are. So even though we can call this uh, take dynamic parameter, the editor is not giving us the help we need to say, hey, what you're trying to pass in here is not valid. This is valid, but not this array we're passing in. And we really want the editor to be able to point that out to us so we're not writing code that will cause these runtime errors when we can avoid it. So in order to give us a little bit better auto completion there, we'll go back into our player and use another built-in feature of GDScript, which is defining our own custom classes. Classes in this sense can really be thought of uh, more as just naming scripts in certain ways. But in order to do that, we will 
right on our second line of our script. So this always comes right after the extension, or if you have a script that doesn't extend anything, it's the first line. You'll say class name, and then we'll call this the player class. And so this tells the editor that we want to add a class to the global namespace called player. And now what we can do is we can say our body that's coming in here is actually going to be a player. So we're gonna give our body the same type parameters that we uh, did in our player when we specified our integer here. So we're gonna say body has to be of type player. And look at this, we've gotten this error that says, hey, you're trying to call take dynamic parameter, which is a function on our player class, but you're trying to pass in an array when it really wants an integer. So now the editor is helping us by giving us an error that's gonna make sure that we're passing in the right thing. And now all of a sudden we don't have to worry about runtime errors anymore when we are using the static typing here because the editor is gonna help prevent that. And that's not to say you won't get errors or you might forget to add the static typing, but it's a helpful way if you're consistent about it to very much limit or erase these runtime errors due to type issues. Okay, so I've eliminated our type issues and our game is good to go, but let's talk about the next type of static typing we can use, and that is return types. So if I come back to our player, let's say we didn't actually want our take dynamic parameter to return to print something out. We wanted it to actually return a number. Well, you can specify what type of thing a function should return by giving it a return type. And so right now, our function has a return type of void, which means it returns nothing. It prints something out, but it doesn't actually return a value to the function that calls it. Let's change that. So now what I can do is actually change our return type, which you specify by adding this little arrow, the hyphen and then a right facing arrow after your parameters, and then you give it a type. So let's say we want our dynamic parameter, um, which is now actually a static parameter because we're specifying as an integer, Let's say we also want it to return an integer. Say we just add seven to whatever we get. So if I change our return type from void to integer, we'll see that we actually get an error now because it's saying, hey, you're expecting a return type, but it's void right now. This take dynamic parameter is not returning anything. So we have to give it a return type. So let's actually say return, whoops, return parameter plus seven. So now this function is gonna return an integer which is gonna be the parameter we pass in plus seven. So now that we're adding seven to all of the integers we pass in to our take dynamic parameter function, let's see this in action. So one thing we can do is say var new parameter and set this equal to the return type of our take dynamic parameter. Now we know that new parameter is going to be 10 because we're adding seven to three, but GDScript doesn't actually know that yet, even though it knows that this has to return an integer. So if we try to do something like new parameter and then concatenate this with a string, so if we try and do, you know, plus string here, it's not going to throw an error because it doesn't know for sure that take dynamic parameter, that this new parameter variable we have is an integer. So this is going to lead us into the third uh, method of static typing that we can use in our code, and that's variable typing. So what I can do here, similar to how we did uh, parameter typing, is I can explicitly add a type to our new parameter variable here. So because it's an integer, I can say integer. And now you'll see that all of a sudden we have this error saying, hey, you can't concatenate or you can't add an integer and a string together. They're not the right type. So all of a sudden the engine is helping us out here. But this is kind of tedious because this returns the same type every time. It feels like I shouldn't have to explicitly define what return type this is. So one helpful shortcut that you can use to get around that is to actually remove the type declaration entirely, but keep the colon, and then you can have colon equal sign. And what this does is it tells the engine, hey, whatever this return type is, set that permanently as the type of this variable. And so because take dynamic parameter returns a integer, this is telling GDScript, hey, I want this to always be the same type it is when I declare it. And thus we're gonna get continue to get this editor error here telling us that we cannot add an integer in a string. So two ways of doing variable typing, and this isn't just for variables that you define locally within a function, it also works for properties that you define at the top of a function that are accessible, or at the top of a script that are accessible for the entire script. And we'll see an example of that in just a minute. But just to prove that this is working, I'll just add a print new parameter here, and then we can see this in action, and we should see 10 getting printed out when our game plays. And so we do this, and we see 10 right when we enter our square. 
So this is good. We've got static typing that is preventing us from passing in incorrect values or incorrect types. And we're making sure that our code is wired together properly. And what this is nice is say that you were working on this game and you weren't the person who wrote all this code. Now, if you came in, you would know what new parameter is because you know that it's always going to be the return type of take dynamic parameter. And so it prevents you as someone who's maybe unfamiliar with the code from making mistakes that come from just not being familiar with it. And what this is also helpful for is not just other people working on your code, but also for you when you take a break from your code for a few weeks or a month and you have to come back and remember how it works. So static typing is a really nice way of providing some of that safety to make sure that you're not doing things um, or you're, you're not incorrectly passing the wrong type of values around in parameters and return types and in the variables you're declaring in your code. So as promised, one last example of variable typing within GDScript in our player script here, if we were to add an array up here, so if I say var variable um, sum array, and we can just set this to be an empty array. Now remember, even though we've declared this variable and even though it's an array, because GDScript's a dynamically typed language, we can actually set some array to be another thing later on. So if I come to our process, uh, our process function here and say sum array is equal to five, well clearly an array and an integer are different types. So if we wanna make sure that sum array is always an array, what we can do is similar to what we saw before. I can just add the colon here, which will set it to be an array permanently. And now we're getting this error saying that I can't change this array to be a value of five because it's not the same type. So that's just some uh, helpful way that you can use static typing with your actual script and class properties to ensure that you're not changing them incorrectly later. And again, this is all just to be consistent and make sure that your code is working together in a way that makes sense and prevents some issues or, or mishaps later on because you're, you've been passing the type you didn't mean to throughout your code. Now there's one more really important thing I wanted to show in this video before we call it. So this is actually that Godot has a setting that will let you automatically add static typing to your auto completion for all built-in functions. So you'll notice that this process function here, which is a built-in function for any node, um, it's, it's got a delta parameter, but there's no actual type. The parameter isn't typed and neither do we have a return type. This is actually incorrect because under the hood, there is a type. So if I were to say delta float and a return type of void, this is actually the return type of that function. And what you can do is tell Godot that whenever you autocomplete or create one of these built-in functions, that it should also include the types. So it'll automatically add these static types just for a little bit of built-in type safety that you wouldn't get otherwise. And so in order to do that, um, let me just show you one example. So right now, if I come into our detection zone and I start typing function, process, you'll see that all of a sudden our auto completion here has flow included and void, which is what I just typed. And now if you're trying this at home, you might see that you don't have these. And so I'm going to show you how to turn that on. So let me get rid of this. And so in order to turn this on for your editor in total, this won't be just for a project, but it's an editor setting. So you'll come up to the editor options menu up at the top left, select editor and then editor settings. And then you're gonna come down and scroll to the text editor section and the completion setting. And then here you're gonna find within this options list here an add type hints option. And you wanna turn this on. And so having this add type hints option is gonna be what adds these static typing hints to your auto completion. And that's just gonna mean that anytime that you have a built-in function that you use, it's gonna include those type completions by default, which is just gonna be a nice way to make using static typing much more consistent across your code. Thanks for watching this introductory video to static typing in GDScript. I'll link in the description below to this video, this documentation page for GDScript on how to use static typing. It's got a lot of really cool other things I wasn't able to get to in this video, so it'll be really helpful to go through it on your own time. Thanks so much for watching. If you've got any questions about the video, uh, we've got a community discord where we'd love to help you in there. If you found this video helpful, a like or subscribe is really beneficial to the channel and helping it grow and it would be much appreciated. So thanks so much guys and I'll see you in the next video.